that's the distance between himself and Clean, who goes through turn 10 here. Can you believe it? We've had nine <laughs> hours of racing, and the first three are separated by less than a second. And there's traffic, and McNish still trying to get more heat into the Michelin tyres. He goes through into turn number one. Miga Salo still leading in GT2, by the way, by just 15.7 seconds to York Bergmeister. And it's the GT2 traffic that gives McNish a chance to close in. Werner gets chopped by one of the flying lizards there, going down through the SS. McNish dives out one way, then the other almost runs into the back of a very slow running GT car. This is absolutely outstanding stuff on the run. Down to turn six, McNish having a look down the inside. He's done him. He's done him into turn six. What a tremendous drive, and he's going to go through. Werner's following him through. Didn't quite make it, did he, Marco Werner? But there's a whole bunch of traffic coming onto the straight. McNish, brilliant stuff. What an opportunity to move there by Alan McNish. He's got that number one Audi into the lead, and he started two laps after everybody else. Fabulous stuff. It's taken him 10 hours <laughs> and five minutes since he put the car off, which was about an hour before the start. Nine hours and five minutes into the race, and McNish takes the lead, and very nearly Werner got through behind him. And you know what? We haven't seen a prototype pass another prototype there all day to day. Other classes of cars, yes, but McNish made it stick, got a great run out of turn five, up the inside of Christian Klein, who drops into second place. But this is by no means over yet, Jeremy. No, and interesting looking at the lap times. One minute 14 that was for Alan McNish. Okay, he had to get some, past some traffic, including the race leading Peugeot of Christian Klein. But the previous lap, when they had a clear run, was only a one minute 10. So uh, clearly the track is not as fast as it was earlier on in the day. Yeah, all of the P2 God, cars behind. He's making his, his, his escape, isn't he? Yeah. All He's of... throwing caution to the wind. Remember, though, what Robin Liddell was saying earlier on and Johnny Morlam about McNish in traffic that they don't, he doesn't mess about. He either yeah. goes for it or he doesn't. He lets people know that he's going to come by. And that stop. What, again, tactics win races. Just as much talent on the wall. Don't forget what we were talking before about getting that Audi in. He was about. 10 yards away from going another lap back, wasn't he? Yeah. After he fueled, and they brought him in the next time round for the tyres on that car. Now, can Werner book the Peugeot down in the third position? A 1088 in the dark. Yeah. Good See, heavens. It just took uh, three or four laps to get these tyres up to op operating temperature, and now they are up to optimum temperatures, and now we are really going to see a battle between these two. How fast can they go? Well, McNish has been hauled back in a little bit. Looks like he might have had a little bit of a wobble going down through the S's. Nick David down in the pit lane. Christian Cleans impressed us all weekend, and he hasn't done that much night driving. No, I think this is only the second time he's driven in the dark uh, in a competitive situation. He did a few hours... Um, at Le Mans, when he was very good, um, he had obviously a, a, a one spin. Um, we unfortunately ditched it on the uh, the gravel and lost two laps. But apart from that, he had a pretty free copybook. But this obviously is his, I would say, his first time he actually raced. Because when he was running in Le Mans, it was wet. And he looks like he's going to go. He's going to. Go, he's got him, I think. No, he's not. He's on the grass and he's almost lost Ooh. it. Nick Damon just uh, watching the same pictures as us. He had a look. He used that. Uh, superior top speed and the slipperiness of the coupe Peugeot to good effect there dragged up behind Alan McNish and put his nose down the inside McNish fairly uncompromising there yeah. didn't give any room at all and McNish an 11-0 there and he didn't really have much traffic to go by McNish drifting out to the left at a huge bit and there's some